Sometimes all it takes is that little push, one more tiny step to go out and start creating. When that push is coming from one of the top people in their game, well, it can't get better than that. This episode of the podcast Pestka Shoots is very special to me for two reasons. Firstly, it is full of really valuable information for any creative working on their own and trying to establish their name. Secondly, I have worked with Tony closely for numerous years and have learned a lot from him. Today, I'm lucky to call him a friend. Tony Kelly is a photographer, creative rule breaker and occasional golfer. He loves vibrant colors and sunshine just like me, so obviously we get on really well. Listen up and you will definitely get inspired. Let's go. Best cash shoots. now. That's a good start. Okay. Yeah. What sort of idea you were saying? That I think um, lots of people that I come across and come to me. I'm in a position that I'm very grateful to be in. That people come to me regularly with idea with, with um, email requests or direct message on Instagram, and they'll say to me, "Oh yeah, I'm, you know, I'm studying or I'm working or I'm shooting or I'm trying to build my." my, 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 um, you know, my name as a photographer and here's what I'm thinking. And there are certain ones that I just feel make sense for me to talk to, you know, How? um, I just, just something in the way it's written. There's something, I don't even need to see the pictures. And I think what I sniff out of it is that they're hard workers. Okay. Right. So I'll get one who's saying to me, yeah, I've just finished college. I love your work. I'd love to come and work with you. And I'm like, okay, that's not going to happen. Right. But I have somebody who says, I'm a photographer. I'm, you know, very much committed to learning. Um, I work very hard or I'm working nonstop, you know, trying to build my image and try to carve it and fine tune my craft. When I see that kind of stuff, there's just key words or an energy it is essentially from it, you know, and I pick up on that. And they're the people that I will give my time to, you know. Um, what what I, do you think that is? Because I mean, your your background is, you know, like you you weren't born in LA. Yeah, you weren't born to. No, but this is nothing to do with LA. This has yeah, got no, to do with this. LA. Can be from Tajikistan. It doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah but the, the I mean? thing is that LA is such a, a, a fantasized place, you know, uh, for people, particularly probably, well, not particularly, but like in Europe. You know the way because it's so far and there's palm trees and there's yeah. sun all the time and there's Hollywood and all yeah. that. Um, yeah. we, we all idealize it and all that kind of way and we all think yeah. that it's the promised land in a way for the creatives, you know? Um, yeah. So I just wonder, does that is that like why do you look for the hard work? Like it, it sounded a little bit like you like well, okay, I wrote, worded the, 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 the question wrong, I guess. The question I, I had was do you believe in talent then or the hard work? Because well, I, I, I can answer that. You've asked me about three different questions, but I'm gonna pick them apart because I do want to answer each one of them because they're all very important to me, okay, and they're stuff that I have strong feelings on. So talent, okay, and hard work, unquestionably, like no question, all right? I have numerous examples that I've encountered in my own life and personally myself as well, okay? Uh, hard work beats talent. Every day that talent is not working hard. I live by that mantra, okay? Like you can be the most talented photographer in the world. If you're sitting at home boozing, you know what I mean? And knocking around with the, like, forget about it. It doesn't make a difference. The guy who comes up, puts his head down and, and, and grinds it out. You know, it's the same in sport. It's the same in anything. I look at Pori Carrington, an Irish golfer who's won three majors. Uh, phenomenal, phenomenal. He's a worker. There was other guys that he grew up in his generation that were better golfers than him, but none that worked harder than him. So my mantra is that hard work, beats talent every day that talent is not working hard. And it's something that really can humble you as well. And it's important to keep your feet in the ground. Always remember that because, you know, 
you're as good as you know your last picture you know in many whether you're a director whether you're an actor whether you're a thing no it's really important to credit yourself with your achievements to enjoy the process to enjoy what comes the byproducts of creating images or movies or whatever it is but you know it's not a critical thing it's like okay but i gotta keep working hard and i gotta keep grinding you know because you're 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 someone regarded as being talented okay is you know someone is, is we talk about someone who's talented because we look at their work we look at their bodies of work and we say wow that's amazing he's talented but you can't rest your laurels as the artist on those bodies of work you can enjoy them you can appreciate them you can be grateful that you were given some sort of gift you know to be able to work with you know but without the work so i go back to the other question about the the guys who email me and the girls who email me I came from a situation where there was other photographers growing up in newspapers where I grew up and worked and learned my craft that were much better than me, you know, um, much better than me. Kenneth O'Halloran included, much better photographer, you know. I used to be kind of working it out, how to get used to guiding, but I put the work in and I craft, you know, I, I kind of fine tuned my craft and I found my area within that. And I haven't stopped working since, you know, like I literally haven't stopped. I'll be on holidays in Ibiza, I'll be answering emails or I'll be thinking of ideas or I'll be, so it is a full-time commitment, but it's a two-way, it's a two-way relationship and it's very rewarding and very demanding and very giving. And it can be giving you a headache. It can give you love. It can give you lots of things, you know, but why I pick those guys is probably because I see a bit of myself in those people, you know, mm. and when I talk to them, and there's one person in particular that I think about who is, um, has come to me a few times and he seems like a nice chap and he's a worker and he's out there grinding. And I see his images and they're so complex. You know, there's so much like about the, 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 the technical side of it that I'm like, the fucking message, the impact, the joy in it has been totally lost, you know? And I think that we look at it and the analogy I use is like a Christmas tree. The concept is the Christmas tree. And without the concept or the idea, there's nothing. You just have a bunch of decorations on the ground. So, I mean, it's really important. And I tell that to people. And some people might disagree, but I mean, I don't give a shit. That's what I believe in. And I've proven that to myself. And I stick to my guns on that. Is that without a solid idea or a solid concept, what are you lighting? What are you going to put your 10 lights up? You know what I mean? And, 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 and you're, you know, you, 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 the technical side, like for what? There's nothing to light. The idea I, is not there. I have to say, you know? this, this is something that I learned from you very much. So Learn, you learned a lot from me. Well, I fucking did. <laughs> well, I learned a lot from you, you know. So um, that's, and I can say that absolutely, you know. Uh, thank you. Two way. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean it. But um, something I really learned that don't even fucking start don't even pick up the camera if you don't have the idea i mean something oh, you know you can find the idea by looking through the camera or whatever uh, yeah 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 but, but we're talking about staged kind of you know exactly. conceptual yeah yeah, yeah. So yeah like there's no point even trying to be the the macgyver of photography and you know, forget about it I'm, what are you shooting why what yeah. why you know what i mean and you remember we were in los angeles Okay, and uh, my sister Christine was doing the production at the time. Uh, I wanted to shoot the Mercedes. I had the idea of the Mercedes in the swimming pool, the Mercedes 560. You remember that picture? Oh, yeah. And I remember my sister Christine saying to me, um, who are we going to shoot? I, we need to know about models and we need to know about casting and we need to know about her makeup. And I'm like, none of that has any relevance whatsoever until we know what we're going to shoot. And I know the idea Okay, I know the concept in my head. So I'll start with what, then the next question is where. And sometimes I'll have a vague idea, but I'll ask the where. And the where will actually inform the what. Do you get me? Yeah. The where will, like I had a situation last week where I needed to find a swimming pool for a shot I wanted to do of a plane coming over a girl's head, which came out this week. It's called Diretto per Roma. And That's I was saying, okay, we need a hmm? That's the one with Sydney. Sydney Roper, yeah, yeah. So I'm looking for the location and I just wanted a swimming pool with a clear sky. So an infinity pool or something high up. And the pool I found had the Hollywood sign in the background. It was a pool right up on Beechwood. 
So in that case, the location starts to influence the idea, the concept. So I say, okay, maybe we can incorporate the Hollywood sign in the background with the plane flying overhead. So there are times. So before we think about taking out a camera, before we think about taking out a light, before we think about the new lighting technique that you looked online in some YouTube editorial, ask yourself what. And remember, the what is the concept. The what is the Christmas tree. The lighting is the decoration, the tinsel, the filters, the reflectors, the umbrellas, all that stuff that you know I don't use any of it anyway because I'm not a technical person. I'm a conceptual. I'm more of a creative. And that, that's, you know, and I've been on shoots, Magic, and I have no problem to say, like I say to you, I want direct light. And you'll say to me, and you've said to me many times, I think we should add some fill. And I'm like, nah, there's no need. And then you'll illustrate it to me why we need fill for later on. So that's all great. But at the end of the day, I can go out to work with a camera or an iPhone and a sun, and, and once the sun is shining, I'm fine. When the sun's not shining, it, you know, it's, it's like someone forgot to plug, the, plug the Christmas lights in. But, you know, keep it simple is my point to anybody who's out there aspiring to be a photographer or wanting to create. Keep it simple. You don't need to buy a fancy camera. You have your iPhone. This is your greatest asset in taking pictures, you know? And I'm not promoting or, you know, I don't give a shit. But the point is, a good iPhone with a good camera and a good idea, you know, and a sunny day, in my case, that's all you need. Keep it simple, you know? That, that, that's your kind of style, right? You know, the, yeah. the sun, what you are actually photographing, all those things, they kind of add up to create the style, mm. to, to make it recognizable. When you see a picture, you say, okay, this is Tony Kelly's picture. How did you get to that? Because, you know, I... I kind of know the answer to it because, you know, I, I work with you so well, so much. Mm. But then, um, I wonder how conscious was it, you know, the choice mm. or, or the direction you went and all that. Kind yeah, of thing. it's kind of like, I mean, you know, you know, you and I listen to different types of music. We wear different types of clothes, even though today we're both wearing pink. Okay. Um, We've different tastes in food. We've different tastes. And you find out those tastes by trying stuff. You find out by listening that you don't like death metal because it doesn't resonate with your rhythm, you know, your internal rhythm. So we try and we find things that resonate with us and that click with us essentially. So there was a certain element of that along the route, you know, and my personal taste of, I remember uh, sitting in the independent newspapers office when I was a photographer at the Evening Herald. And I remember I went down to the bookstore next door and I bought Yachting Weekly or Yachting, Yachting Monthly, right? And in the book, right, this was a gloom, well, it was probably summer, but I remember the day, it wasn't sunny outside, I think it was a great day. And I'm sitting in the office with the other photographers and Brian O'Brien, who now works at the Irish Times, came up to me and went, Jesus Kelly, he says you live in a fantasy world. So we're in the Irish Independent, which to be honest with you, I was like so grateful for that position, working at a national newspaper at 21 years old, you know what I mean? And going out there and learning and being involved. And I'm looking at yachts in, 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 in Yachting Monthly. And I'm not talking about like boats with two or three dudes, I'm talking big yachts. Now, I never wanted to have a big yacht. You know, I never aspired and I still don't. You know me, Magic, you know where I live, you know how I live. I enjoy my life. I enjoy comfort, but I don't aspire to have like a 10 bedroom to have some Beverly Hills or up in the hills because I know the bullshit that comes with it. You know, I like to keep it simple, but I do appreciate visuals, you know, strong, colorful, uh, um, exotic, um, you know, tropical. I love all the elements that those visuals bring me, you know. So essentially, if you were a chef, you know, there's chefs that cook with certain ingredients. They're the ingredients I use because they're fun. And at the end of the day, as humans, fun. You know, I remember being to see a psychologist years ago and he said this to me. He said to me, you're not having fun. And he says, it's the smallest word, three letters, but he said it's essential. And he said, I tell this to couples. I tell it to think you got to have fun, you know. So I enjoy the fun elements in my pictures. In terms of answering your question, how I got to there, I guess trial and error. And I remember one day, uh, an old friend of mine, Joey Cleary, who was a photographer, 
I, I was shooting in Barcelona. I moved to Barcelona because I didn't, I wanted the sunshine. I've always loved the sunshine. I like sitting in the sunshine. I like being in the sunshine and the gloomy winters and kind of half, half our summers, I suppose, in Ireland got to me as much as I, you know, I always say like the warmth in Ireland is in the people and the banter, you know, the weather isn't great, but I'm Irish and I'm proud to be Irish and I love Ireland. But for me, the light in Ireland wasn't going to deliver what I wanted, you know, in terms of, I still didn't know what I wanted, but I wanted sunshine, you know? So I moved to Barcelona and I like, you know, I remember playing with different things. I was shooting black and white sometimes because I was looking like everybody does at that point. You're looking in fashion magazines, you're looking in Vogue and you see what Mario Testino did last week and you'll go out and you'll copy that. Okay. That's okay, guys. That's okay to do. Everybody does it. And I'll see you at the time. Huh? Part of the process. It has to be part of the process. It's like learning to play piano. You don't learn to compose your own pieces yeah, until yeah. you've learned to play other people's pieces. And I think that's really important. It's okay to look at fashion magazines. It's okay to see that at that time, Terry Richardson was in his prime and he was doing good, good work, you know? Um, and... I don't agree with him as an individual and never did, you know, because I could see the under the underbelly of what was happening. But he shot some nice stuff for Vogue at the time. And I remember seeing a bikini uh, clad girl walking through the streets of New York with kind of builders. Was, what I liked about his stuff was there was a twist, you know, there was like a twist to it. So I tried to do that. I copied that. And I did my version of it. Didn't really do anything for me. Then I got a, a girl... And I had her chopping up meat in my apartment. Like I did all sorts of experiments, you know. Um, some were black and white. I used to put the picture in black and white to give it more impact, you know. And I remember going to see my mentor at the time, who was Jose Manuel Ferrater, who was a very celebrated fashion photographer in Spain. And I was working for him for free. So I gave up my job in the newspapers, went to Spain, and I kind of knocked on his door every few weeks. And eventually they let me work for free as his third assistant and let's just say as a photographer i'm a lot more productive than i was as a photographic assistant it wasn't <laughs> it wasn't my thing no, but I'm he knew that to, to 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 completely agree with that even yeah though- I, but he knew that and there was an unspoken respect mutual respect that he saw me as a photographer you know and i took these pictures in terms of answer your question how i got to find that there was two, there's the conceptual side of it and then the aesthetic side of it. So the conceptual side was, I took these pictures of a girl in, um, up on my terrace in Barcelona and we were throwing buckets of water on her and it was sunlit and there was a black backdrop in the background and it was water exploding. And I was like, wow, this is amazing. I still have the pictures, of course. And I brought them to him. I printed them out because I used to have to wait for him to have a quiet moment. I'd literally wait, you know, wasn't a case of going in the next morning and showing him. You'd have to wait. It could be a week. It could be two weeks. He was a busy man. And, um, and it was quite an old school kind of setup in terms of Jose Manuel was very much, you know, a very respected figure. You know, there was like that kind of, you know, you had to wait. Very well. So I got my time. With, yeah, very good. And a great guy. And this was a day that changed my life, essentially, and my career. Uh, I walked in, I showed him the pictures and he said to me, he said to me, he looked at them and he was like, he was like, kind of, he's like, yeah, he said, you know, I still remember it. He was like, anyway, he was like, yeah, yeah. Nice. He said, you know, there's 50,000 photographers who are shooting this stuff and they do okay. You know, and I had to learn Spanish as well. This was all in Spanish, you know? And he said, and they do okay. And he said, and you can be one of them. But he said, your background of being a press photographer or a reportage photographer, as he said. He said, they don't have that. And he said, that's a unique kind of asset that you have and experience. And he says, you need to take, because at the time I was like, I want to be a fashion photographer. There was only one problem. I didn't give a shit about fashion. I didn't give a shit about the clothes. I was interested in the story, you know? And that subsequently caused me trouble with stylists later on because they care about the clothes. I was like, I don't give a shit about seeing the clothes. And I still don't today. I don't. Again, the clothes are part of the decorations on the Christmas tree, yeah, you know? Um, less important than the light. But still, well, probably equal. Um, or no, I'll come back to that. But he said to me, he said, you already have 
something really special. So he said, as opposed to you going into fashion, he says, you bring the fashion and the girl model into your world. So he said, you know, and he said, you already can do that. So we spoke about an example in Ibiza, in an emergency hospital ward in Ibiza where people are coming in like, you know, <laughs> unconscious or drug, I'm not laughing at that, but like, you know, drugged out of their minds or in a mess, you know, at four o'clock in the morning. And he said, we, we spoke about putting in a beautifully angelic kind of model sitting in the middle of all that. And when he said that to me, it was like just the most simple, straightforward, obvious kind of totally made sense is what I'm saying. Not too much obvious, it just made sense. And I was like, oh, you know, it would be like trying to learn to play golf left-handed and someone says, actually, you're right-handed. <laughs> and you realize and you're able to hit the ball. So I remember walking down the road and if you can see, like I still get the hair on my arm stands up when I think about this moment because I walked down the road and I was just like, I've got this. I've got the skill set. I don't need to spend my time working on how to fucking light with five lights and one pointing in this direction and thing. And that's not really me. And he told me as well, he said, keep it simple. You just need one source of light. And that was, I remember walking down Enrique Granados or down towards Plaza Catalunya or whatever it was. I remember walking down, I just had this feeling and I set the wheels in motion immediately. I found a girl in Ibiza the following weeks because I was working in Ibiza at the time as a paparazzi to make money to be able to work and live in Barcelona and work with him, you know? And uh, I got agency work for this summer to work as a paparazzi photographing celebrities. And because I had done that stuff as a press photographer, you know? Yeah. And I remember going back to Ibiza and I just wasn't interested in doing the paparazzi work. I wanted to find a model. I found a model and then I photographed her in Amnesia. And it was this drag queen night and all these people were out of their minds and drugs and dancing. I mean, some of them weren't, some of them weren't. And I put this girl in between them all. And I still have the pictures. And the pictures are okay, you know? From mm -hmm. there... I built from there. I realized that I, I personally was more stimulated when there was more color, when there was more pop, when there was more, you know, and I remember as a press photographer being in situations where I'd photograph something like a news event. And I remember thinking, Oh, it's really nice, but I'd like if this was here or this was here, you know? So I had my vision. I wanted to create and little by little, it all just kind of comes together. Again, the cooking analogy, you learn how to cut the stuff. You learn how to mix it. You learn when to put the stuff in, you learn how long to cook it for and I started to play with the colors. And I don't think I've ever spoken about this before on any interview, but I started to play with the colors and to push the colors a little bit. And there was an old Canon camera, like a sure shot digital camera, and it had different color settings. And a friend of mine showed it to me. Uh, and one of them was vivid colors. So it was like your Canon uh, S, what was it? It was like an S something. And basically, he showed me a setting and we took a picture on it and I had like vivid and the picture on the little screen on the back of the camera was jumping off the screen. And I was like, that's it. That's it. That's what I want. So then the retoucher I had at the time in the early days was called Arkites. He was a Spanish guy and he used to smoke a lot of weed, <laughs> like really like smoke a lot of weed, which I just, weed is like something I just really don't like. But he would, he's a lovely guy in fairness, a nice person, but he'd go out onto my terrace and he'd smoke weed and come back in and continue retouching. And he'd be like baked. And I was trying to get this color, you know what I'm saying? That pop. And one day he just took a curve and he did something with it. And we got it. The problem was he couldn't remember what he'd done. Because <laughs> he was stoned. <laughs> so I never forget it, Magic. And I was like, that's it. That's what I've been looking for. So um, I said, how did you do that? And he was like, oh, uh, he couldn't remember. So we had to kind of backtrack and eventually, you know, pretty quick. And that curve essentially served as a template for me when I would take a picture, I would put this little contrasty curve and it would just bring up the whites, crunch the blacks and saturate, you know. And, and that essentially was there and then my trademark. But the reason it was my trademark is because it resonated with me. It was a taste. It was a flavor. It was a texture that I just was like, that's it. That's what I want. It's like when you hear a song. I use this all the time. It's like when you hear, I'm trying to think of a universal song. Like if you're in a bar tonight, whether you're in Gdansk or whether you're in Los Angeles and you put, in, put on David Bowie, let's dance. 
Yeah, of course. Or Donna Summers, I feel love. Few people will not be tapping their feet or getting into it. And that was that moment where it resonates with you on a visceral level. And it was just like, that's it. And from there, the aesthetic side of it was kind of there. And then of course I develop it. And when you worked with me, massive contribution to developing that under different light conditions that we'd still maintain the saturation and the contrast because there's so many different situations, you know? Yeah. Um, but it's, it's and so, again, it's, it's something that I, I really appreciate it as well, you know, because I, I remember the very first time when we talk about the curve and, yeah. you know, I remember you, the first time you did it, you, 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 you've done it in front of me and I was like, what the fuck is he doing? It's, it's, it's didn't make sense. Not correct. It's yeah, it's, exactly. You yeah. know, you know how I am. Like I, it's of course, very, very square. Technical. technical. Yeah. And I was like, yeah. this, this is impossible. And it's probably one of the biggest lessons I've learned when it comes to technical stuff from you. That <laughs> pop technical. Absolutely. It, it looks, and that goes back to fuck the lighting. Fuck, you know what I mean? Yeah, Get yeah. the idea. If, 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 if it's good, if it resonates with you, if you think you have the picture or if you have, like yeah. two weeks ago, I was doing a shoot and I, I remember, remember, I remember remembering your working with you on shoots. And I remember I, I, I was photographing, photographing, and we spent half a day on one photograph. And we didn't get it as in, we didn't get it as in, I, I was like, it's, it doesn't look good. It looks shit. It doesn't fucking. That's a good thing. Yeah, it's a good not thing. working. And I remember thinking, what would Tony do? I was like, he would fucking just keep grinding, keep grinding. And you know what happened? Absolutely. You know what happened in the middle? It, it, one of the ladies, one of the, the, the talents, she was sitting in like uh, those um, sun loungers. Yeah. She tr I asked her to move it forward. And then she collapsed with it and caught her finger in the thing. No, no, yeah. she, she caught her, her finger in the thing so she couldn't work anymore. But we still continue with the whole thing. And we got to the point where I was like, okay, this is now it, it kind of makes sense. It, it's all, of course. It, it all came back to this, the whole technical thing, you know, like it doesn't matter. Nothing matters until you feel it's the, the, the something that resonates with you. I like, Totally. And, and the other thing is, and this is one of the reasons, one of the things I, I want to do this chat with you is that your people who watch it and the people who watch it realize that from, we'll say, the, hang on a second. I'm going to put the other AirPod on. Hang on. Yeah, it's hard. This one. Hang on. Better before. Hang on. Yeah, Sounds well, better. Than AirPod, no? Way better. On the AirPod. Yeah. Hang on, I'm going back to it now. Connect. I just had to take the left one. I had a charge in case we came across. Oh, I think it works now, though. Hang on. Are you there? Yeah, yeah, I'm here. Why doesn't it connect? You there? So you're saying the sound is actually better now? Yeah, unless something Wait. happens. Now, how is it now? Good now? Yeah. It's is fine. it okay now? Yeah, yeah. Um, so I'm back on the AirPod. Um, that, if you think... Right. And I'm not saying this as an expert. I'm saying this based on my own experience. Okay. And magic, your testament, you're, you're, you've, you've witnessed my own experiences. Some of them are really fucking intense. Okay. That I've been on shoots going, oh, Jesus, what's going on here? Because it doesn't always go your way. Where the expertise comes is that you know what works. You know straight out the type of people that are going to cause you trouble and that are not. You know the type of models you don't want. You know the right amount of trouble to have. You know what I mean? You know the hair and makeup. I did a shoot last week and the energy on set wasn't my normal kind of vibe and it affected me, you know? And it affected me and I felt there was just a bit of a different vibe on set. That happens. And the other thing is to guys who are starting off, if you think that you're going out and you're going to get a picture every time, forget about it. You can get a picture every time, but you got to grind and grind and grind. And my background in terms of sport is golf. And I know from golf and I know from watching professional golfers, you know, you can win in one tournament one week and you don't win again for three years, right? That's, that's completely connected to this. So if you think it's you're going to shoot a girl, no, like it's part absolutely, of it. but you've got to have stamina. And you develop stamina from exactly what you said, like, which is grinding and grinding. And the other thing is like, 
if you think, okay, I have this great idea for a picture, I'm going to shoot it down on the beach and it's a girl in a parachute, whatever. The chances are your first few friends, they could be okay, but it doesn't work like that. You know what I mean? It's not a case you have the idea, you go out, you get it. It's like, you got to grind it out and you got to realize and be prepared for that. And that's where stamina comes, you know, is when you learn and you have your B game and you have your, you know what I mean? You have your reserve energy and you're able to go, okay, this is not working. This is happening here. The model's pissed off here or whatever. Uh, and this is not working. And then you go, okay, you eliminate all those people. You don't give a shit, you know, if people are pissed off. I mean, you treat everyone with respect, treat everybody as you wish to be treated. I've always stood by that and lived by that. And you've witnessed that, but you can't on the job, keep worry about, Oh my God, maybe the hairstylist doesn't like that style because they didn't want, no, it's your vision. You eliminate all that stuff because at the end of the day, the exchange is you're there to take a picture and those people, all they will care about is the picture at the end of the day. You know, I've had trouble with stylists, with hair and makeup, with all those people. Now I have a team that we're all pretty much aligned. You know what I mean? And there's no, everyone knows, they know their roles. They know what I'm there to do and they respect that. And that's when you get to a place that you can focus more on what, but to go back to the point of it is not easy and it requires grind. And so does anything in life that brings you rewards, whether it's athlete, athletics, whether it's music, whether it's writing, whether it's directing. I mean, how do you think Martin Scorsese feels after day in his, what age is Martin Scorsese in his 70s, six, late 60s, early 70s, yeah. 70s, early 70s? How do you think he feels after day 128 on Wolf of Wall Street or on, you know, um, what was the name of the last one? Um, with De Niro yeah can't remember I saw it though it's, uh, it, 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 oh, it's over three hours it's a long one it's fabulous how do you think he felt on day 102 in the editing suite you know what I mean you think he's sitting there going oh this is great banter I'm going down for a few scoops at half time no he's sitting there grinding his ass out and, and, and remember that that don't be afraid that's my point don't be afraid of the fear don't be afraid of that bit of panic that sets in because you have a hair and a makeup and a model and you're using your best friend's house and their mother's sitting there and you're looking at the screen and the pictures are shit, right? In your opinion, you know, don't be afraid of those moments. They're the moments where you put it into second gear, you know, and then it comes back again. And they're the moments where you put it into third gear, you know, and you don't be afraid of those moments. Those moments are to be expected. It's all normal. It's like writing again. You, I go back to music and I go back to Chopin when he's writing the previews. You think he just sat down and just scribbled them out and that was it. He was like, yeah, that's fine. And played it to his missus. And she was like, yeah, that's great. All right, we'll stick it out. No, that's not how it works. Months and months grinding away, crying. And, you know, that's the life of the artist. So do not be afraid of those moments of panic. Those moments of panic are what make you grow, but you got to go and grind it and grind it and grind it and keep with it. And if you don't get it that day, go back the next morning and fucking grind it out again. And if you don't get it that day, keep going. When do you know you have it? That's the next part is when you look at that picture. Okay. And you get a buzz out of that picture. And that's how I determine when I've got it. Now your standards obviously increase as you go along and I'm constantly learning. You know, I shot that picture the other day and I had the airplane overhead and I was like, this is a nice picture. It needs a twist. So I'm playing with it, you know, and I say, well, turn the plane upside down. And we turned the plane upside down. I was like, now I'm smiling at it. Now it stimulates me. Now I get this again in my arm, you know, the hair. My, and I'm like, okay, this is good. And that's when I know I have it is when it stimulates me. Can it be better? Well, yeah, of course. You know, if we bring in this or we bring in that, but you know, with what I had on that day, they're the ingredients. So I, I, I essentially get all my ingredients together. I have the idea in my head. The ideas come to me when I'm in the swimming pool. They come to me when I'm driving my car, when I'm looking at stuff. It just comes, you know. And, but it didn't come at the start. I was looking at Mario Testino's work, you know. So it's again, go back to the music analogy of like, you play other people's music, you learn the technique, you learn what works, you learn what don't, and then you start kind of creating your own when you know the structure, I suppose, of how to create the idea. But when I have the ingredients together, which was swimming pool, rooftop garden, you know, with a clear blue sky, I had the airplane, I had a good makeup artist, I had a very good model, 
and I had an outline of what I wanted, then I start playing with it. So I'm covered. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not going to leave that garden without a picture. Like if I have to fucking camp in that garden and wait for the sun to rise the next day, I will be there. You know what I mean? Because I go into a mode of like, I'm staying until this happens or I'll be back tomorrow. You know what I'm saying? It's like, there is no... I was, I was a witness of that. Do you remember we, yeah. were, we were with Mickey Mouse who we grabbed from, uh, from Hollywood Boulevard. We were by yeah. the sign. And I remember hair makeup, everyone was freaking out because it was, it was cloudy. And you yeah. were like, I'm not, I'm not even leaving the location to, to, to photograph. Like, we're waiting. We're going to wait until the sun comes. We waited from 9 a.m. until 4.15 p.m. Maybe, yeah, yeah. 4.15. It was 4.15. Because I remember after we took the picture, we then went back and it was like the sun was gone. I never, I never, and let me tell you about that day because you were there. The back, my stomach is like that, tense, because I have hair and makeup. All it was. Yeah, you have, you're you exposed. You have two models. Of course, in the back of your head, you're going, are they bitching about me? Are they moaning about me? And who gives a fuck? You know what I mean? I don't care. You know, the they're picture. probably not. The picture. All I care about is the picture. And, you know, you might just have to bring in your PR skills and you just say, okay, does anybody want a drink? You know, blah, blah, blah. But I remember sitting there that day and I said, there was a window at about four o'clock. I had seen it on the weather. And I was like, I'm waiting for this. And that today is one of my favorite pictures, you know? And it's, it is one of the solid pictures. Like, and it's like, you treat people with respect. Nobody's walking around a set of mind saying, oh, I don't give a fuck. You no, know, we treat people with respect, but you explain and you make it clear. I'm here to do this and we're going to sit this out and get them involved, you know? And yeah, we stayed there till 4.15. <laughs> I'm not sure there was much food either, but we stayed there till 4.15. And we got the picture. And it's a great feeling. Some guys, garden. We were. Yeah, yeah, it's true. It's true. Yeah. It's true. And that's, that's just stuff that you have to build that muscle. It's a muscle, you know? And it's a muscle. But like, I was on a shoot the other day and I felt, I was on a shoot last week with Paris Hilton. And uh, we shot this big story with Paris and it's something that will be out in a few weeks. And it's something I'm, very very proud of and i had such a wonderful day at work i had a great props team everything was on point everything like and paris who i love like just love the girl she is just a gem and there's mutual respect there again where i respect her as an artist she respects me as an artist and it's like just clockwork you know there was even a time where i wanted to bring uh, a set of airplane stairs, you know, the stairway that goes up to the airplane. <laughs> yeah. I wanted to bring that into her mother's garden, you know, to shoot her in that. And it just worked out too complicated to bring something like that into Bel Air on the back of a truck. And I mean, again, I, I, I that stuff doesn't worry me in terms of if I want to do it, I just see the, I see the picture, I see the picture and then we work backwards from there, you know? but it was complicated to bring it into Bel Air on the back of a truck and it was very expensive and it was just getting messy. And I just said to Paris, I said, uh, listen, when we're finished shooting here around half past four, we need to get in the cars and we need to drive to the Valley to Air Hollywood where we're going to do this picture. <clears throat> and she was just like, yeah. And that's it. And that's when you know you're having a good day because you're working with talent who's on the same page as you. How do you get there? You got to earn your stripes and you got to put the grind in, you know? It's, it's the trust, I guess, right? It's the trust. The trust comes from you earning your stripes. You know what I mean? Like, and it's like anything. If you want to be a doctor, you want to be a surgeon, you got to put the days in. You want to learn to fly a plane, you got to put the days in. And the more you do, people see your work, they respect your work. And then there's a mutual, you're kind of on the same level. You know what I mean? And, and that's the people I like to photograph today. Because I don't, honestly, I don't shoot for magazines today. I have no interest in shooting celebrities for magazines. It's of no interest to me. And my friends who are like a creative director of GQ or whatever, they know that. I'm not interested. I couldn't give a shit. I prefer to photograph a pair of shoes with nobody in them, you know, or just a pair of heels. Uh, because I think there's a massive, you know, I am an artist. And there's a massive uh, difference between your subject and the photographer. You're seen as a photographer and it's a case of, you know, it's almost like a begging situation. And I think that a lot of photographers lose their balls in those situations because you have a publicist there and you have two team and you have or a, a, an entourage. And it's almost like I've been in those situations. It's a nervous situation. You're like, oh, would it be okay if we, would it be okay? You know what I mean? You can't create art in that situation or something with edge. You know what I mean? I shot Paris last week. We're there. And I'm not talking about looking down or anything. I'm just talking about on the same creative 
note or chord, you know, and that's the way it has to be. So that's the only stuff I would touch. If I was asked tomorrow to go and photograph whoever, you know, the news net Netflix star, uh, for I just like oh, honestly, I would rather play golf. You know, I really would. I, I'm dead serious. You know me, Madge. I would rather photograph toy G wagons in my garden and a new idea I want to work on, and I'd rather photograph like toy kind of um, you know planes flying across. That that's that that to me is more interesting than photographing celebrity. I have no interest in the concept. I think it's an awful waste of time. To be really honest, you know. Would you would you not say that you're a celebrity in the photography world in a way? I mean, I I think another thing is nobody should ever describe themselves as the following: a good person, a celebrity, a philanthropist. You know what I mean? I think that there are terms that third parties use about people. You know, um, I've heard I, I I look on you know or a public figure. I see that on Instagram. People describe oh. that public figure. Um, uh, philanthropist, celebrity, you know, um, I, it, it's like, you know, I'm a guy from the north side of Dublin. I work my ass off and I've dedicated myself to my craft. And it's like, people can call me whatever the fuck they want. You know what I'm saying? I'm comfortable with that, you know? But I mean, if someone calls me a celebrity photography, well, I embrace that. Thank you. Because I put the work in, you know? So I appreciate that. Word, Tony. <laughs> Word. <laughs> my man. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Well, you've slept on this celebrity sofa for many a nights, and you know, like the, have, the real, the real grind. And I think all those accolades or those kind of, you know, nice. They're all byproducts, you know. Whether it's money or whether it's success or whether it's getting this or that or awards, whether you're a musician, uh, a director, and all that. But like none of that stuff, you know. We'll take like the highest accolade for me for an artist is an Oscar, you know, for a director. You know, which is the art of directing, the art of movie. I mean, the work and the dedication that goes in, that that's when you're a celebrity for me. You know what I mean? Is when you've reached the highest level and been awarded the highest accolade. But that's the glory day, you know. The work that comes in that goes into that and the dedication is I mean, it's serious stuff, you know. And 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 that's what I want people to know when they're starting is don't be afraid of the work. Don't think you're going to go out with your mates and come back with like a Ryan McGinley of one of your mates, you know, hanging out of a tree or something. Just grind goes into that stuff. Don't be afraid of it. And keep at it. And keep pushing it. And keep pushing it. And keep pushing it. And it will come. You know? Well, that's a, Very important. That's a great note to finish on, I think. I hope it's not the uh, last time that yeah. we're, we're recording this. Although I absolutely hate those fucking uh, online things, you know, it's it's terrible and so not personal. Um, no, you 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 did you did visit Gdańsk once yeah. time, um, and you have a great name for it now as well. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no thanks. It was winter. It was winter. It was winter. It's all I'll say. March. It was winter. Yeah, it's a long winter <laughs> in Poland. Yeah, it's winter all the time. <laughs> anyway, um, I hope I hope you you come visit, or I'll see you in Europe or something, and then we'll. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, I, I think I think that it's uh, it's it's great this that you're doing so well for yourself, and I mean this totally, like from my heart. Okay. I you know because you know I know we worked together for a long time, and even a few weeks ago I was coming to you asking your advice on the book a new book that I'm publishing and I was stuck with the color and I was like magic, you know? So that speaks volumes about my respect and trust for your, for you as a person and your expertise, you know, um, you as a person really, I'm not, but like the expertise, you know, uh, no, but it does. And, you know, we've traveled a lot together, a lot, no, I would say, is that fair to say a lot, you know, many days on the road and knocking around. Um, and I would say, that like your contribution here massive you know and I'm grateful for that you know but I'm also equally grateful for the day when I said to you you got to go and do your own thing here you know and you know it was your time to go out and do your own thing because there comes a time you know and you did it and you're doing it and you're putting in the grind and another thing is embrace that situation that you don't have time off because once you start something and it starts to roll you're in it you're in the wheel you know, enjoy it, you know, so that's, yeah, the, that's it's a pain in the hole. 
sometimes. It, it really and, is. I, I, it's funny, I, I probably, I, I think I said it before, but I only got to appreciate all that time, or rather all the things that I've learned mm -hmm. from working with you only after I actually of course was put in situations oh, of course because you're doing work. it yourself yeah you're doing yeah. it yourself yeah so um like I, i've learned like it's you know it, I, I can't even measure you know yeah. how yeah. much knowledge that yeah. actually gave me uh, yeah 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 terrible to college or some other shit no 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 not at all um, not at all i mean that's just a different thing it's a different thing you know what i mean better, yeah um but still anyway listen but it's because you're putting yourself in those situations and by action leads to action and action leads to insight, you know, and by putting yourselves in those situations, you can then recall information that you recorded or you experienced. And you're like, and me being in those situations is how I learned. You know, I didn't learn from anybody else. Essentially, I learned from just being in the situations. But it's, it's, it's great to talk to you, buddy. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Tony. I hope I thank hope you. that the take from this is that people realize one key takeaway is it's normal to be nervous. It's normal to be afraid. It's normal to, to get very nervous on shoots. It's normal not to get the image straight away. It's all normal. Embrace it. It's part of the journey. Keep the grind. It's not a case of saying, I didn't get it. That was part of No, you go back and you go back and you go back. It's all normal. You know? Well, motivational speaker, Tony. There you go. Enjoy it. <laughs> I'll talk to you later. Talk to you later, buddy. Thanks, buddy. Take care. Good to see you. Thank you so much. You. Thanks. You're more than welcome. You're tuned in to Best Cashews. Hey, jeszcze chwila. Na zakończenie chciałem usłyszeć Twoją opinię. Jak Ty sobie radzisz w swojej kreatywnej pracy z poruszonymi tematami? Piąteczka. Do usłyszenia za tydzień. To było Pest Cashews. Rozmawialiśmy o kreatywności.